The San Jose State Spartans are next. And, of course, anybody that's watched this show long enough knows how much we appreciate Brent Brennan. Uh, went 5-7 and seven last year. Uh, but the postgame win expectancy numbers paint a different story. Uh, three and a half wins was their postgame win expectancy, and they ended up winning five. Uh, now, you can say that that's coaching, that they were able to win some games that they probably should not have, but it definitely doesn't set them up well for this year. Uh, they lost quarterback Nick Starkle, who was only able to play in seven games last year, so that, that definitely did not help. Uh, running back Tyler Nevins is gone. The left tackle, Jack Snyder, uh, who was really good, he's gone. Safety, Jay Leonard, and the tight end, Derek Deese Jr., who was just a monster. Uh, he is gone as well. But they do return a lot on a defense that was pretty good. Um, they were number 20 in the country in returning defensive production, number 64 on offense. Uh, the defense, as far as roster strength goes, uh, number 45 in the country. Like, that is that is P5 level. Like, defense was really good. Uh, they were number 34 in defensive PPA per drive. But uh, but let's start off with the offensive coordinator. Uh, cordon, excuse me, the offensive side of the ball. The OC, Kevin McGiven, uh, enters his fifth season here. The offense was just a disaster last year. After being so good in 2020 in that COVID season, uh, they just had a ton of turnovers, negative plays. Uh, but they did get a transfer in here. And that transfer was quarterback uh, Shevin Cordero. From Hawaii, um, can that cornerback or that quarterback and the wide receivers that came over from Nevada can those improve the numbers that they had on offense? They were number one hundred nine in passing success rate last year, number one seventeen in offensive PPA per drive. Like that is brutally bad. Um, Starkle, he was injured in week four. He missed five games. Uh, they started uh, well. He started the last three games of the season. They were all losses. Like, the numbers were not good. He never came back fully healthy, it didn't look like. Uh, as far as the defense, like I said, loads of experience and upside on all three levels here. Defensive end, uh, Fehoko, and the linebacker, Kyle Harmon. Um, and then, of course, cornerback, Nehemia Shelton. Uh, and then you got safety trade Jenkins. These are all guys that, that could be NFL draft picks. Secondary yeah, was number... Yeah, these are, yeah, these they are, are awesome. Sunday guys, man. Oh, 100%. Could, could, could be Sunday guys. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. Uh, secondary was number 75 in pass uh, success rate allowed. They returned two cornerbacks with 500-plus snaps. And, of course, the uh, the safety Jenkins returns. And they did bring up a transfer, USC transfer Chase Williams, who he may end up being the most talented guy in the secondary. Uh, give me give me your record here. What, what are you looking at for this team? So I like this team, I think, better than you do. I've, I've got them seven. I've got them flipping their, their record from last year. I've got them seven and five. I have them six and six. Okay. I do like I was them. Wondering, I was wondering if you were five and seven still or if you were giving them a bump. Oh, I'm giving them a bump. And I could I could see them yeah. seven and five for sure. Um, my losses here, I've got them losing to Auburn. I've got them losing to Western Michigan, which they could easily win that game. I've got them losing to – That's a game I think it's a coin flip. Oh, yeah. Uh, at Wyoming, I've got them losing that one. Uh, at Fresno, at San Diego State, and at Utah State. I've got those as losses. Their road schedule is not forgiving. I, I will certainly say that. Nope. Um, they definitely have, I think, the toughest schedule on uh, like this side of the bracket. Yes. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I, I think they're pretty tough. That's I I I would tend to agree with you. Uh, going to Auburn and then bringing Western Michigan in, like that's yeah, that's rough. But Western Michigan. So all of them play a P five school that we think they're probably going to lose to. It, most of them play another G5 school that's not a Mountain West team that I kind of favor so far in the in, in, in doing this in this division, I kind of favor all the Mountain West teams over all the other divisional teams that they play. This is the one where I think you're right. I don't know that I can favor them over Western Michigan. Yeah, that's I, even with the game at home, I just – Western Michigan, I, I trust uh, Tim Lester. I trust what he does. So They're tough. Yeah, that's a tough They're football tough. team. I mean, that's, that's a tough – that's a, yeah, we talk about this Mac, you know, football. These are these are tough kids, man. But I think <laughs> it's a good game. You are not wrong. Uh, my keys to the season here: find a way to stop turning the ball over on offense. They were number one twenty-seven in turnover margin last year. Uh, they got to try and find some kind of consistency on that side of the ball. And then I put they cannot lean on the defense for everything. Um, I put in here: defense has some studs, transfers, and youngsters need to step up quickly. 
And then I put uh, they went four and two in one score games last year and still went five and seven. Uh, without a steady offense that could easily regress this year, uh, they've got to score more points this season. So I've, I've got them at six and six. I don't think they're going to go four and two in one score games again. Like I'm sure that will probably regress to about three and three. Uh, but I think that the defense is good enough, and with Cordero uh, at quarterback, and then of course the uh, the wide receivers Cook and Lockhart, um, I think that those guys are are really good. So I've got them at six and six. Um, not bad, not bad. And Chris just dropped out, and we're gonna let him jump back in here. But uh, but yes, so. So with Nevada, or sorry, it's San Jose State. I've got them six and six. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.